Hello, my darlings. Welcome to another Bedroom Guru with me, Nikki Allen. I am, um, I've had a lot of interest in this. Don't look like it in the views, but hey ho, I'm gonna do it anyway. Lots of people have emailed saying how interested they were in the story here and TikTok, to be fair. Um, so I'm gonna give you another psychic detective story. This one is about Ronnie Fuller. Um, I don't know how his family got through it. I do know that I've got permission because I have mentioned him in my book, The uh, Rise and Fall of Britain's Best Psychic Medium. And, and basically he was subject of a hit on his doorstep. And unfortunately, um, a drive-by shooting took place. Sounds like America, doesn't it? In the UK, um, in Grey's Essex, where he was shot in the head in front of his partner and his, how old was Jake? I think he was about four years old at the time, or five. Can you imagine? I can't even begin to imagine. I was a family liaison officer. Um, so I uh, walked into the family to give them the update as soon as he had been killed and what was going on. That's what I did and I loved my work. I was very confident in knowing that I knew exactly what to say with bereaved, shocked, devastated families. And this was no exception. Initially, because I had the official, you know, entrance, um, introduction, explaining everything, facilitator and all the rest of it, I um, was just closed off completely professional, completely professional. Um, and the family were, there's no word to describe it. How can you describe that? How can you describe what you've just seen, your partner being shot in front of you? So anyway, I ended up being allocated with someone else to um, look after the partner of Ronnie. Now what family liaison officers do, I have described in another video, we facilitate information between the office, the inquiry office and the family. We also um, have a look into the family. It's quite a difficult situation to be in because you know, sometimes family members are responsible. And so you've got to, it's a very fine line between um, asking and noting behaviours of family. It's very, quite a very difficult job. But this turned out to be the most beautiful, beautiful family. Um, and his partner was just, they were soulmates, she was devastated, but was very open to us helping her and obviously updating her on the job. The problem is the first time that I went in to see her in her family environment, this was a nightmare. I walked in and there was like a hallway. There's a bedroom to the right. And then you walked into kind of like this lounge, a huge television in the lounge. And I walked in. I thought, oh my God, no, 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 no. So she had, I think it was um, Ronnie's mum. No, sorry, not Ronnie's mum. Her mum and dad and family members sitting there all like looking up at me expectantly. And Ronnie was standing by the television in full form. I was like, oh shit, no. So I'm trying to look at him and trying to trying to think of what I need to say officially. <laughs> oh my God, what am I gonna do? So I'm like, oh, don't look at, don't look at Ronnie, don't look at Ronnie. And he looked magnificent, really handsome man, big built because he was a doorman and um, totally innocent, God bless his heart. Um, and he was standing there like that. He had this big strong jaw and all his hair was done. He was like real, like handsome, good looking, big buff man, right? And I'm like, oh shit. So I'm like, trying not to look at him. He's going, hi, like that. I'm going, oh my God. So he'd obviously got over this trauma really quick because he's standing there. This is supposed to be about a week on, a week in, and he's standing at the television. So I'm like, oh my God. So I'm, can you imagine? I'm trying to ignore him and trying to remember everything I need to say officially and answer their questions. And he's standing by the television. I'm like, oh my God. So this kept happening. Now, I can't, as a professional detective, a family agent officer, go and go, oh, by the way, the spirit of your husband, you know, partner, son, is standing by the television. Of course I can't. But he obviously wants to talk to me, but I can't open my energy. See, we have to get into frequencies, you see. So I can't open my energy to him and be a, a professional detective with the family. Do you know what I mean? It was just a nightmare every time I went there. He'd be either standing by the telly or he'd be walking past. I'm like, oh, and, th and then even sometimes they go, and Nikki, yeah. And they'd be looking to see where I'm looking. I'm like, don't look, don't look, don't look. Then um, he kept showing me the character Johnny Bravo, right? Now, for you, for people who don't know, he's like this really square jawed, really cool dude that's a cartoon character. Google it. Actually, I'll put him on now.
right that's johnny bravo and so um i kept seeing that every time i went out i think i'm losing my mind this is just an absolute nightmare anyway cut long story short after about six months of knowing larissa um i kind of said to she kind of found out i don't know how she found out that i did a bit of psychic stuff on the side i think my person i was working with made a joke of it and said oh you should know that everybody says that so um she went oh my god really so I went, yeah and i said i'm gonna have to ask this i said and if you think i've overstepped the mark please just say do you know what i mean so i said um why am i seeing johnny bravo she went what and i said i've got to admit i've got to say to you i have seen ronnie standing by the telly she went oh my god i can't believe it so i said why she goes i thought i was going mental so i said why she goes right well ronnie's nickname was johnny bravo Right, and I'm like, holy shit. And she said, um, and what's been happening is the TV's been turning itself on, like during the night or just during the day, and it's on the channel when Johnny Bravo's playing on Sky. I went, you are joking me. And she went, no, no. She goes, oh my God, this has brought me so much comfort. Thank you so much. I thought I was going mad. You know, that it kept turning on. I thought, did I watch it last night? Did I leave it on that channel? And so I said, darling, he was here within the first week. He was standing by the telly looking magnificent, beautiful and handsome. He's up there, obviously, and now his mum's up there with him. And most of his dad as well. And it's just, it was magnificent to just bring that in with the work environment. She totally accepted it. She was totally open to it. I didn't push it. I didn't say anything. I never, ever mentioned it. She was the one that brought the conversation forward. And um, it's just, it's not so much a funny or a, it's just a wow factor that everything he was showing me was exactly what he wanted to let her know. I'm here. I'm with you. I'm okay. I'm looking after our boy. Um, and I'm so sorry this happened, but I will never, ever leave you. You know, never. Um, and... So he's no doubt the guardian angel of Jake, who's now a beautiful young man with his own child. Um, but that's my little story for you. The Johnny Bravo. Um, beautiful Ronnie Fuller. God bless you, Ronnie. And um, I hope you enjoyed the story. <laughs>